Hey there, it's Tanya with FreeRangeCottage.com and I am out today thrifting to restock my flea market booth. I'm at a rummage sale down the street from my house at a really big church. Um, I don't know how big the rummage sale is, but the church is big, so I'm hoping it's a good one. But I am uh, needing to restock my inventory, and so we're gonna see what we find. I'm excited, I hope there's some good stuff. I've got my comfortable shoes on, I've got some cash with me, and so let's go in and see what we can find. So right when I got in there, guys, my hands were full. It was a huge sale, just like I thought it was going to be. So I didn't get any video, but I did film a short video on my phone that I sent to Rob. It's not the best quality, but I'm going to show it to you. Most of this stuff is already sold. So stay tuned to the end and I'm going to give you five tips to start your own flea market booth. I've done it for years and I've always been profitable. So check it out and some other thrifted things. I bought that really big hamper basket for eight bucks for us. I bought some boho purses. Those sell really, really well for a dollar piece. This little boho plate in the cloche, those do really well. We did some repurposed cloches in there from light fixtures and they sold really well. The P was for me, our last name starts with a P, so I'm putting it in my bathroom. You can see that hutch there was made with the pressed ceiling tin, it was really nice. Like I said, the purses were a dollar. I'm always looking for farmhouse style things because they seem to do really well and these cork placemats are just so cute. I may end up taking those back, but these boho style, these were real vintage lamps and I got those for $5 a piece and they sold for $45 for the pair. And this, I always get the ceiling tin picture frames and I painted those white. Uh, linens, some of those sell. I got them really, really cheap. The fall colors are selling. Quirky kind of stuff is sort of for like a man cave, or I always like to have some kind of stuff in there that would appeal to a guy. I don't know why, I just like that little brick cottage. Of course, uh, wrought iron candlesticks, beautiful. Got those for really cheap. I think they were maybe a couple bucks a piece. That bottle I kept because I love, I'm a wicker addict. Uh, the Texas jacket, and I also had a brown jacket. Those both sold already. Clothes seem to do really well in my booth. Vintage and, you know, just boutique style stuff. And I think I got those for $2 a piece, and I think they sold for $15 or $17 a piece. Again, another farmhouse, like Little Croc, that's already sold. The Owl Trivet, popular in boho style, is uh, Owl's a fall sort of arrangement. Um, didn't pay much for it, a dollar or two. Vintage looking or boho looking baskets sell really well in my booth. People are always looking for ones that they can put on the wall or use. These are real boho little glasses. Those are already sold. I love them. I was very tempted to keep them, but I have enough <laughs> glasses. Farmhouse style lantern with the candle in it, I think was a dollar. So that could be quite a nice markup. Okay, so I hope you had fun I'm looking at a few of the things that I had picked up at that rummage sale. It was kind of crazy in there. There were a lot of great prices. And like I said, I, my hands were just full as soon as I went in there. So I wasn't able to video. I was on, I was by myself. So I had to just get while the getting is good. <laughs> But anyway, if you're curious about the side hustle of a flea market booth or just selling furniture or anything like that on the side, I've done it for years and years. Uh, I'm actually a registered nurse, but while I was homeschooling my kids for 19 years, I usually only work that part-time if at all. Normally, I would have some kind of side hustle that would allow me to stay at home. And one of those has been a flea market booth. Also, I've sold on Marketplace, Craigslist, LetGo, uh, Etsy, eBay, you name it, um, craft fairs, whatever. I've pretty much done it. So anyway, I wanted to just give you a few tips. If you're thinking about doing it, if you're needing a side hustle to make extra money, or if you love thrifting 
If you love home decor, or maybe you love vintage dolls, or whatever your passion is, you might wanna share it with other people and make some side hustle money on it. And it's a really fun, creative way to make an income. So my first tip is if you've never done this before, just to you know, put your toe in the water, you don't have to go out and spend lots and lots and lots of money on inventory or to set up a booth or to get your, say, Etsy store started or whatever. Start with um, things in your home. If you're a collector or if you love home decor like I do and thrifting, well, that just equals a lot of extra stuff at my house. But I'm also, I lean towards a modern vibe, vibe and I just don't like a lot of clutter, especially in a, sort of an open concept uh, space that we have downstairs. I don't like to see a lot of things at once. So I end up finding all these treasures and I'll enjoy them for a while and then I'll pass them along by selling them or I'll just buy them strictly to redo and sell. If you've seen my chair video, uh, my $5 chair makeover, my husband and I uh, made those over and sold them several days later for um, $80 on Marketplace. So it's a nice little side income. Okay, so that's my first tip, is just start with what you have, or maybe you have friends that are getting rid of things or what have you, maybe a piece of furniture you wanna paint and flip it, maybe um, smaller items, like I said, if you have collections, whatever. So start there, it's low risk. That's what I like about this side hustle, is you can get started and it's pretty low risk. You can build yourself up slowly. So I love that aspect of it. Number two is if you are going to go out and rent a flea market booth, look around your town, go to the flea market before you just walk in and say, I want a booth. You wanna watch their traffic, you wanna see what their hours are, you wanna meet the owners and the people that work there most of the time because for the most part, I've been in, um, gosh, probably five different flea markets over the years. And for the most part, the owners are great people and they're willing to work with you, but they do have specific criteria of what they want in their flea market. So you wanna make sure that what you have in mind, maybe you're wanting to sell vintage clothes or something like that. And I know some of the flea markets here don't allow any clothing. And the, the booth that I have now, clothes and hats and bags have been selling really well. So that would be, that would really put a damper on some of my income if I wasn't able to put those things in there. And you just wanna make sure that you have a rapport and that you click with those people and that you look over you know, the contract and is it month to month? What kind of commitment are they asking for? And all of that kind of thing. Understand all of that from the get-go. Usually you will have to pay for a month's rent in advance, but if you go ahead and have a garage sale or sell some things on Marketplace or whatever and get yourself a little bit of operating, operating capital, then you can go ahead and use that as a business expense. That's my next tip, number three, is make sure you keep track of your um, expenses because when it comes to tax time, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that um, you have all your expenses to write off there. I'm not super militant about this, but we do keep track and we keep track of you know mileage and things we're buying. And then at the end of the year, uh, we have some write-offs and having a small business is such a huge tax advantage. If you do it almost just for that, it's really worth it. Okay, so number four. If you're in a smaller location, like a smaller town, and say your flea markets do well, I mean, you wanna know for sure that they get enough traffic, and different times of the year will be busier than others. The fall and up to Christmas, of course, is crazy. We have a couple of huge craft affair type events here that go on twice a year, and some other things that go on that bring a lot of tourist traffic in, so I know that these flea markets are sustainable they're getting a lot of sales but if you're in a sort of a smaller town you want to make sure that 
it's getting enough traffic and sales. And you can go ahead and ask the owner that. What is your average person? What can I expect to make? What is your average person making here? What sells well in here? You need to ask them that too. My fourth tip though is if you're in that smaller locale, you may have to go outside of your area to auctions or thrifting or that kind of thing to get your inventory. Not to say that everything in your booth has to be vintage or used or resale or whatever. You can sell new things. You can buy things wholesale and sell them new. It just all depends on your location and your specific flea market you're in. And you can always try small things. Like for instance, I've been putting uh, thrifted and vintage bags and, and jackets and scarves and things like that on a small scale just to see how they would sell and they're selling phenomenally. So now I'm thinking about uh, wholesale, getting a wholesale account for a couple of uh, items that I would just bring in that would be new things that I would sell. So that's one thing is um, keep your risk low. You may have to shop outside of your area. And my fifth tip right now, I'm sure that you guys have a lot of questions that I'm not covering. So please put them in the comments. Hopefully I can answer them for you. If not, I will do my best to find out what the answer is. But um, just years of experience has taught me a few things that you just, you just can't read in a book from someone that hasn't done it. You just have to uh, kind of walk through it yourself. My fifth tip is just to go for it. It's a little scary putting yourself out there at all. Um, if you've always just worked a traditional job or maybe you were have always been a stay-at-home mom or you just haven't ventured out, maybe you're really young and you're just getting started in your income or maybe you're a different age where you're wanting to transition out of what your full-time job is and you want to side hustle for some extra income and maybe to turn it into something full-time, just go ahead and step. You're halfway there if you'll just go ahead and step out and try some things. It might not be exactly what you expected or what you wanted, but you will learn so much in the process. You'll learn about business. You'll learn about how to price things. Um, you'll learn what you like and don't like about this kind of business. And those are all really valuable lessons. So I hope that you'll share with me what you decided to do or if this would be a business that you would never attempt and I just talked you out of it, I don't know. But also, I just wanna welcome my new subscribers. Thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you haven't subscribed, I would hope that you would consider it. If you like home decor, DIYs, uh, repurposed, thrifting, living on a budget, all things home, then please subscribe. I have a lot of fun stuff coming up. Um, it's fall, we're gonna have some holiday things, we're gonna have some room reveals. I'm working on, we're working on our kitchen, I'm working on my office creative space. There's so much going on all the time here at the cottage. So I hope you'll subscribe and we can be in touch. So thanks for watching. And again, contact me anytime and let me know if you have any questions. Oh, and I almost forgot, of course I've been thrifting since that last thrift haul. I can't stop, the, the treasure finding is just too much for me. But I wanted to show you a couple things that I got. I got two of these pillows. Ah, oh, anything black and white just grabs me. I've got to have all the black and white. So these are, they had the tag on them and their threshold, which is the Target brand. And I just absolutely love them. I didn't bring up here, I got a huge velvet one that's from that Opal, I forget what it's called at Target, that Opal House, I think it's called. And it's gorgeous, it's like a, a celadon green and I'll show you that another time. But I got them all for like four and five dollars a piece. These had a little bit of a, they were a little bit dirty on the back. They had Clearly they had never been washed. It says to spot clean on there, but I don't listen to that, do you? It feels like down, but I read on the tag that it is actually fiber fill. So I put them in my washer with some OxyClean and I put my homemade stain remover on there. Even though it wasn't stained, it was just a little bit dirty on the dirtier spots. I've got a recipe for that on my blog. I'll put the link down below so you can make your own. It's real simple, it's three ingredients and it works wonders, especially on all this thrifted stuff that might be just a little bit dirty or it's never been washed or whatever. Anyway, they came out beautiful, two of them. 
they, I think they were $4 a piece. And I was so happy to find these. They weren't the only thing I got, of course. I got a whole cart full of stuff, but I'll just show you these two things. Also what I got, I love, oh my gosh, it's a king size whole cloth quilt. It's all cotton. So a whole cloth quilt is, if you don't know what it is, it's um, just one piece of cloth on each side rather than pieced together. But then it's got the quilting on it. And I thought the color was just subtle and beautiful for Christmas for on my bed because I am gonna use some traditional um, reds and greens this Christmas. So I hope you'll stay tuned for my Christmas house tour later on. Um, that will be coming up too. So those were two finds. Of course, washed it, dried it. It's beautiful, it smells good, it's wonderful. So those were a couple of finds just for my own home. And um, I'm sure I'll be going out thrifting again. So let me know if you want me to take you with me while we find the good stuff. So again, thanks for watching. And again, this is Tanya from freerangecottage.com. And I hope you'll um, hit the notifications so you don't miss anything coming up. Let me know if these tips helped you. Thanks, bye-bye.